Maka's guides. <laughs> Hey guys, Mac here playing Call of Duty Black Ops 3. This is a full collectibles guide showing all 56 collectibles. They come in a variety of different shapes and sizes. In fact, every single collectible does look different to you as the player. I'll be taking you through all 56 in chronological order from the very beginning of the game to the very end throughout all 11 missions. Depending on the collectible size, you will see it on your HUD as you approach it. In the first mission, Black Ops, the first collectible is an NRC radio communication little walkie-talkie thing. You can find that on the desk after you learn how to crouch. Later on, you'll enter a room where you have to interact with a panel and use hidden cameras. Look behind that panel and you'll find your second collectible. Your third collectible in the little room where you can look into the interrogation room through the window. In the shelving unit, you can find an Egyptian army hat. Collectible number four is a replica nano drone inside one of the hangars. This is not the first hangar, but one of the hangars. It has a downed uh, helicopter in the middle that you actually shot down, I believe, if I remember correctly. In the left-hand side, there's a little bit of a storage unit, storage unit with some, like laundry machines and you can find a replica nano drone later on once you make your way into the garage you can find the VTOL panel before entering the vehicle make sure you don't enter the vehicle unfortunately black ops has an autosave system and you can't actually restart your last checkpoint so it's a little bit difficult if you miss any of these you're gonna have to restart the entire mission before getting in the vehicle make your way to the back of the garage to find the VTOL panel next up we're starting mission two this is collectible number six after using the drones to kill the enemies and blow up the generator, you can actually do this without doing that, but I recommend you do that first just so there's no enemies in the next area. Instead of progressing directly to where the game wants you to go, you're going to want to go into the little hangar area that you used the drone to fly and kill people. Next to one of these small kind of circular girders, you'll find the defective robot hand in a pile of sand. The bomb detonator cap inside the metro looking area with the ice coming out of the walls. You'll see the huge gigantic hole in the ceiling as a good reference point. You see the uh, actual marker for where my mission objective is off in the distance as well. Upstairs you'll find the small platform with some tipped over garbage cans. You can find the bomb detonator cap there. Collectible number 8, the model maglev train. You'll come to this area. It's kind of an open area. You'll see that there's some staircases down underneath. They're a little hidden. You won't really have to come downstairs but you should see a wide variety of staircases and holes in the ground to drop down here. You can use this to kind of stealth through this area, but at the bottom, in that little basement area at the very back, you can find that train. Now we're inside of an actual train, still in Mission 2 New World. There's a lot of missions that are completely different halfway through. You'll be in like one section and then you'll be in a completely different scenario in that same mission, but you'll be in a train. There'll be a bar directly into your left. You'll wanna hop over the bar, look behind the bar, you'll find some premium liquor. Then you'll move on in that same train a little bit further. You'll come to your first train car with a staircase up to a second level. If you go up to that second level and look on one of the first seats, you will find a small train pass. Now, collectibles come in a variety of shapes. Like I said, there's small collectibles, medium collectibles, and large collectibles, and that's actually how the game classifies them. The larger the collectible, the easier it is to see from a distance, and the easier it comes up on your hood. Near the beginning of Mission 3 in Darkness, the broken respirator can be found in the first kind of major battle area. Before making your way up and getting into the high winds area, you'll want to come to the right hand side, go through the door, you'll find this kind of mailing post office and behind the desk you can find that. Next up, after using your kind of anchor or surge protector uh, and clearing out all the enemies in front of this building, instead of going directly to your mission objective, you're going to want to hook around to the right hand side and can kind of go behind the building. Uh, that you would actually go into straight through the front door. You can actually go through the building and then uh, instead of coming out to the side right away, I think you can go through the building and then come around the outside and make your way to this exact same point. A little bit later on in the mission, we'll make our way to a subway metro station and we'll have to dive down into some deep water. Uh, instead of going directly down to the mission objective, you're going to want to actually just stick to your left, go to the little light you'll see there, uh, in between some of these broken cement pillars, dive down deep, deep. You'll see a little bench, and on that bench, you'll see a child's toy. Obviously, you'll want to hold the prompt on the screen in order to pick it up. Some people might be wondering why I'm playing on PlayStation. It's because that's how I got my review copy. Don't complain about it. Next up, on Mission 3, in Darkness, still same mission. We're going to come up into this big area, and we can find the Warlord helmet by progressing through this area. I've obviously cleared up the enemies, as I always do in all of my videos. And at the very back room... You'll go in, hook around to your left, you'll find a second room inside that room. You can find the Warlord Helmet. In Darkness, the Foo Dog figurine. You'll come to this section, drop down. Obviously, again, I've cleared all the enemies. You'll see a small staircase here to the right-hand side. 
you want to go all the way across and you need to make this gap this gap's a little bit hard to make but you should be able to make it with a few tries just make sure you get a nice sprinting start and you jump really late once you jump across and you're on the third story make your way across to the first kind of big room and you should find the food dog figurine sitting on a mantle near the end of the mission you'll find the therapy session recording by continuing to your mission objective and instead of going to the right hand side after going up this small staircase and triggering a cinematic to end the level you should be able to quickly uh, interact with this in order to pick it up now we're moving on to mission four at the very very beginning you can find gangsta bling and to find gangsta bling you have to actually just drop down you'll see that there is a small garage to your right hand side as soon as you drop down from right where you begin there will be a small sign that says roof and you should be able to find it on top of the generator now the next collectible is strung directly from that same location I've went ahead taken out all the enemies and then kind of recorded the clip again so obviously you'll probably want to take care of the enemies on your way here but if you just continue through the market stay on the right hand side you should be able to find this kind of brightly lit corner with a blue light and you should be able to find this large super tree souvenir the dud slave collar can be found after making some progress in that same mission you'll come to an open area with a lot of enemies you have to jump across this gap and you'll see a building to your left hand side instead of continuing forward go to that building go up the stairs and inspect one of the shelving units kind of right at the top of the staircase to find the dud slave collar the antique vase can be found in the container ship container shipyard area you can go right or left in this area it actually gives you the choice they connect to each other at the end so if you choose to go left and then you watch this part of the video it's okay you can loop back around or come from the other side but i'm going to go from the right hand side from where we entered and you'll hop up on this red container you see there's two blue containers in the second story and you can find an antique vase sitting on the edge of one a little bit later on you'll come to the biodome area you'll come to these balconies kill a few snipers there'll be a few enemies underneath you you can actually get the flowing flak achievement right here or trophy obviously and once you kind of make your way into this uh, exhibit area you can find the mineral by making your way about halfway through the room and then turning around to look inside of this cutout area obviously picking up the mineral now the last collectible in mission four it's a little bit hard to maybe understand if you're not here at this section in the game yet but you'll come to the super tree section and all these trees are connected via a variety of like different uh, tracks and what you're going to want to do is from the first tree that has a track on it you can either go forward or left you're going to want to go left and go to the kind of most left you can go as soon as possible so right now i'm on the left tree the first left tree as soon as you get there you're going to want to run across again you can get here two different ways i'm going to be showing you the way i got here run across the bridge now i'm on the second left tree once i'm here cleared out all the enemies go down the stairs and turn to your right at the very bottom you should be able to find the bullet shell necklace after that we move on to mission five this mission is called hypo center at the very beginning of the mission we can find 54i data pad so we're just going to come down the hill you should see a small yellow tent that has some ripped tarp on it go inside that tent and you should be able to find the data pad sitting on a small box waiting on your shot once we make our way inside you'll just want to go down the stairs and continue to the left you'll see that my objective markers to my right before we do that the door will close behind us I believe you will want to come to the left fall all the way down the hallway you should find a large contamination test kit pretty hard to miss if you're in this general vicinity obviously go up to it and pick it up next up is the coalescence marketing material you'll come down this small slide and you'll come into the very bottom of the large pit that you've been kind of slowly wake, making your way down You'll drop down all the way you'll probably take some damage on the way down but drop down to the right instead of the left you should find this small little bunker area inside you should be able to find uh the actual collectible sitting on a coffee table obviously go next to it to pick it up a little bit later on we can find the bio content containment canister you'll come to this office area instead of coming down the stairs with the green walls you'll want to make your way into the small little office room and you should be able to find a large canister pick it up in order to actually you know pick it up next we can find the e-ink whiteboard in this office area you'll see a whole bunch of like cryogenic pods where they would keep robots or humans or whatever it is and to the left you'll see your objective instead of going to your objective right away make sure you hook around to your right and check that desk next up you'll go to the kind of water area the server room area you'll kill a whole bunch of robots that spawn out of the water 
instead of progressing through, make sure you get into the small office that is a little tucked away behind the corner to pick up the prototype DNI implant. We're about halfway done the game and halfway done the collectibles at this point. Mission six, damaged optical camo cloak at the very beginning of the mission. Turn to your left hand side to find an alleyway. In that alleyway, you can just go to the very back on a small piece of like a curb. You'll be able to find the collectible pretty easily. It's under a huge spotlight, so you shouldn't have much trouble finding it. The bioluminescence the bio orchid can be found once you're on the rooftops. So you're going to be have a small like sniper section. You can actually fail that section and just straight run to the objective if you want. But it's going to tell you to do it stealthily. Anyways, once you drop down from the rooftops, stay on the right hand side through the garden. You'll find this guy hanging on a tree in the next area through the doorway. Hook around to your right hand side. You should be able to find a glowing orchid. That is your collectible. Pick it up. I'm going to stop trying to use the word hooking around because I think I've been using it too much. Still on mission six, Vengeance, we can find the HCXD bomb sniffer robot. When we find our way close to a parking lot, we take out a huge boss that uh, built that uh, crashed its way through the wall in front of us. That is now where we're going to be going. And we're going to go to our objective to the right hand side. But instead of that, just hook around again, hook around to the left hand side to find the robot itself. This is a medium sized collectible. And with these collectibles, you can actually go to the kind of in between mission area and you can put these on your mantle next to your bed. Kind of cool. Near the end of mission six, the dragon necklace, you'll make your way through these two broken down walls into this fiery room with a kind of server computer in the middle. If you just go to the right hand side, you should find some furniture on a table next to a small table, an end table next to one of the chairs, you'll find the dragon necklace. Near the beginning of mission seven, rise and fall, you can find the NRC helmet. You'll follow your allies into a room and it'll almost appear as though I'm walking in slow motion, but the game just makes you walk really, really slowly so that you don't get too far without them finishing what they need to say to progress the story. Anyways, if you just continue walking completely forward from where you entered, you'll see a small desk with a computer. Uh, on that computer, next to the keyboard, you can find the NRC helmet. Obviously, you'll want to pick it up. That'll be 33 out of the 56 we can get. Continuing on with Mission 7, Rise and Fall, we'll make our way into this area. You'll see that there's a giant gap in the roof that'll be your kind of obvious identifier as to where I am. If you go up to the left-hand side, up the broken escalator, behind the little like data center, you can find a broken stained glass next to a computer just sitting on the desk. A little bit later on in that same mission, you'll spawn and you'll see this exact screen that was on just there. If you run through the left door and go to the left, you'll find the NRC propaganda poster. This is when you're given the gravity spike gun. Later on in that same mission, the military officer sword can be found as soon as you make your way out into this large kind of demolished high rise building area. To the right hand side, run down, run down the first staircase to your right hand side. We're a little bit lower than when we started. At the very end of the hall, we can find the military officer's sword. This is the one I personally used in my actual little bedroom back in the customizable area before every mission. Hey. Mission seven, rise and fall, broken piece of statue. Once you come to the VTOL, instead of opening it, before we do that, you're gonna wanna go to the right hand side and next to these chairs on the little desk, you can find the piece of broken statue. The last one here, you'll come to a kind of large open area with a monument of some sort in the middle if we go to the right hand side, we can see some kind of maybe movie theater with neon lights. We'll go inside of there, we'll go up the staircase, we'll follow the hallway, and at the end of that hallway, we'll find the etched glass bottle. Near the beginning of mission eight, we can find the shell casing by walking forward. You'll see these two small bunkers and a little forklift type thing in front of you. Uh, if you look to your right hand side, you'll find a small bunker that's kind of embedded into the side of a hill. Inside of there, you can find the shell casing. Just a little bit after that, maybe 30, 40 seconds, you'll come to a small trench. You cross over a river. On the left hand side, you should see a turret with a small little bunker of like sand uh, bags. In there, you'll find a World War II US field radio. Go into that bunker and pick it up. Later on in that mission, a lot has changed. 
there's a whole bunch of rocks there's gonna be these wolves but they might come like right as you enter this area or right after so keep in mind if you've been fighting wolves a lot you're a little bit too far but before that you're gonna be following your ally kind of through the forest you'll come to this open area with a giant ammo crate and next to that ammo crate there's a small um, little box of wood and you can find the field binoculars on that box so now we're making our way outside and I wasn't following the story enough, but there's something happening clearly that made the side of that like street like parallel uh, perpendicular to where we are now. Anyways, once we're outside, you'll see a small barn and then a little house uh, to your left hand side. Go into the house, up the stairs, and at the top of the stairs we will find a small box, and on that box we can find a Russian field compass. From there, I've went ahead and killed all the enemies, and this next collectible is from that same location. Directly in front of us, you'll see a small opening in the, like a window. Jump down and you'll see a small shed directly in front of you with a door and a little window above that door. Run into there and you'll find a Russian hat kind of directly in front of you in a small back room. Later on, we can find the Wagner gramophone record. We'll come up into this kind of open square area and there will be a tank. The tank might spawn in a bit later, but I've taken care of all the enemies. I wanted to leave the tank so you guys knew what we were facing because it's a little bit hard to distinguish things in this level. Once we make our way into the first house on the right hand side, in the back room, we can find the gramophone. Next up, mission seven. Mission nine, sorry, sandcastle. If we land on the comm center, the first place we land, I pick the left landing. If you pick the right landing, it's, it's the same thing, but just backwards. So I picked the left landing and once you do that just walk into the little center control console where you're going to be defending my objective is directly above me directly under your objective in the first place you land you can find a postcard in the second place you land there's only one option one area to land we're going to land and as soon as we land walk forward and take the alley to your left hand side you can find the industrial drill bit parts lying on the floor in the middle of this hallway pick them up there's only two collectibles on mission 9. It's a little bit of a flying mission, and it's on the shorter end as well. Mission 10 is Lotus Towers. You'll ride up an elevator. You'll enter in this kind of hallway area. You'll see a billboard on the left-hand side. You should see the same kind of signage as I do. And we can find a Hamza, don't know what that is, on the wall right there. Then we'll go into an air vent, kick down the vent. There'll be a whole bunch of enemies, which I'm going to skip because I don't want you guys watching me kill them. I'm going to throw a flashbang. Uh, just to the left of them, we can find some kind of lockers, and inside the lockers, we can find Taylor's Insignia. Next up, we'll have this area where we can wall run, or we can just walk up the ramp. We'll have to do a short wall climb, and once we climb the wall, you'll see this. You'll see a large ball, uh, the little razor ball, kill one of your teammates. I'm going to make my way up the stairs on the right-hand side, and near the end of this hallway, once you're up the stairs, there's going to be a whole bunch of enemies. You can find the hookah number 49 out of 56. We're almost there, guys. We are like 90% done the collectibles. There's a lot in this game, probably more than any of the other Call of Duties. Next up, the wall hung carpet. Later on in that same level, you'll walk up a steep hill. You'll come up to this flat area with a blue tarp and a red sign on the right side. And you'll notice my objective is all the way up. You'll see some broken down roof pieces above you. You'll have to wall climb up this little bunker and then go to the right hand side and use these pieces of concrete as a ramp. Before we go up forward to progress to our objective, make sure you use this small concrete uh, kind of ledge or uh, hanging platform, whatever you want to call it. Go across and you'll find the carpet lying on top of the roof that I shot near the beginning of this clip. The decorative lantern can be found later on in the mission. You'll be making your way through this area. You'll see the ramp off in the distance, the kind of walkway. And we'll have to go through some broken down little pieces of building on the left hand side. And if you stay on the left hand side while going across them, you'll find the decorative lan lantern. Later on in that mission, you'll see a gigantic warship in front of you as you spawn after a cinematic. Turn to your right hand side, you'll see a broken down building. Inside that building, there's a whole bunch of consoles. On the ground, in between the consoles, you'll find the melted robot part. The final four uh, final four collectibles on the last mission, Mission 11, Life, the promo poster. As soon as you spawn at the very beginning, turn around directly behind you on the coffee house, you can find a promo poster. 
Later on in that mission, we'll enter this area with the terminal as our main objective. Before interacting with the terminal, make sure you go to the left hand side. You'll see some computer consoles. You can pick up the prototype robot part next to the far end console. This next one is called Fulgurite. Don't know what that is. Someone might let me know in the YouTube comments. That'd be great. You'll come to this kind of desert sandy area, clear out all the enemies. There's a tree thingy underneath me. And this one involves a little bit of climbing, so pay attention to exactly what I do. On the building to the left, we're going to hop up on the first rock, hop up on the second rock, do a little sprint jump into the balcony. You'll end up on the balcony ledge, jump directly above you, hook around the wall, jump across the little gap, and then jump right where I just aimed. Uh, keep tapping your jump button so he mantles, and you should end up on the ledge. Once you're on the ledge, just turn around, and you should be able to pick this up. There are more than one way to, there's more than one way to get that one. That's the easiest way. The final collectible, the one that'll get you your achievement or trophy, the one for curator, the one for all 56 of 56, happens near the end of mission 11. The mission's called Life, and you'll come to this mandatory cinematic as part of the game. After you purge, or as you're purging, eventually, once you gain control of your character, you'll be facing a hallway. Go directly forward through that hallway. You'll see a desk with a large sign behind it. Behind that desk, you can find a raven feather, which will unlock your achievement or trophy. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope this video was useful and that you guys appreciate it. I would appreciate if you drop a like, let a friend know about the video, share it around whatever websites you guys like to go to, and hopefully, i see you next time. Peace!